Hello there, I'm Matthew Gardner and welcome to this week's episode of Mondays with Matthew. Now today I'm going to talk about a somewhat little-known survey that's published by Fannie Mae and it's one that's followed by people like myself but also one that doesn't, at least not in my opinion, get the attention that it deserves. It's called the National Housing Survey. Now this survey was started back in 2010 to generate new, timely information regarding consumers' attitudes, their intentions, and their financial conditions as it relates to housing. I particularly like it because it's the only significant national monthly survey of consumers that is primarily focused on housing. And it's also particularly valuable to me because generally speaking, traditional economic data is backward looking, um, but surveys are different as they can signal how consumers are reacting to changes in economic conditions that are happening right now. The data can also give me great insights as to what they're thinking about the future as well. Anyway, so every month, Fanny collates the answers of 1,000 consumers across the country to 100 survey questions. Now, before you hit the exit button, don't worry. I'm not going to ramble on about all 100 questions, but I am going to talk about the responses to six of the questions that are part of the survey. And these six questions, well, they're collated separately into an index that's called, appropriately enough, the Home Purchase Sentiment Index. And the survey is constructed from consumers' answers to these six questions. You'll see the first two, well, they look at whether it's a good or bad time to buy or sell a house. The second two look at what direction they expect home prices and mortgage interest rates to take. And the final two, well, they look at how concerned these people are about losing their jobs and whether their incomes are higher now than they were a year ago. So let's take a look at the most recent survey. Well, this shows the aggregate index level over time and there's really nothing too exciting here. With a few anomalies, the trend's been positive over the past eight plus years, or it was, up until COVID-19 hit. Now, given the massive drop that COVID-19 created, I thought that it would be more interesting to look at recent moves in the index rather than looking at the longer term trends. Now, as you can see here, hopefully more clearly, the index was plodding along rather nicely through February. But when the pandemic hit in March, oh, the index dropped significantly and it got even worse in April, with the overall index at a level not seen since the end of 2011. But it turned around remarkably rapidly. Good improvements seen in May and an even greater increase seen in June. Now, of course, the level's still down by 15 points when compared to a year ago, but the snap back, certainly impressive. So what led to this very quick and robust turnaround? Well, people who thought that now would be a good time to buy a home jumped to a net positive of 34% in June from just 2% in April. Now, when I say net positives, that's uh, basically the ones that say it's a good time minus the ones that say it's a bad time. And at 61%, the share of respondents who thought it was a good time to buy, well, that matched a level not seen since last November. Now, I did want to mention that there is another question in the broader survey that speaks to renters, and it asks them if they would buy or rent again if they had to move. A full 69% said that they would buy. And that's the highest share in over five years and certainly supports my belief that demand from renters, remember our discussion about millennials a few weeks ago, well, that they will be a major force in home ownership going forward. But I'm digressing. When it comes to whether it's a good time to sell a home or not, well, things look a bit different. And in as much as the share of people who thought that it is a good time rose from 32% in May to 41% percent in June, the net was still minus 7%. Now, it's getting better, but it's well below historic levels. And I think that it's likely sellers are still concerned about listing their homes as the pandemic appears to be coming back 
and getting worse in several markets across the country. But when it comes to price expectations, well, the results there were very interesting. As much as there was a nine point spread in favor of prices rising over the course of the next year, it's tight. And almost one third of respondents thought that prices will remain the same over the next 12 months. I was also surprised to see that a oh, full one quarter, 25%, think the prices will actually go down. Oh, for those mathematicians out there who say that 34 plus 31 plus 25 don't make 100, well, you're absolutely right. The last 10% said that they just didn't know what was going to happen. Now, the expectations regarding mortgage rates was also interesting. I was initially surprised to see the share of people who thought that rates were going to rise, especially as rates have been steadily dropping during the survey period. But in hindsight, it's actually not that surprising because you have to look at the question. It asks about rates, not necessarily today, but rates over the course of the next year. So I think it's reasonable uh, that some, or many actually, will think that rates will rise at some point from the historically low levels that are in place today. And the final two questions are more focused on the broader economy, but they are meaningful because confidence in employment and income, well, they're very important when thinking about buying a home. Last month, just over one in four survey respondents were worried about losing their jobs. Now that's the largest share since the summer of 2013. But I must add that the survey does include renters as well as owners. Um, that's, and so I think it's likely that they, to a degree, pushed this level higher. Finally, most thought that their incomes really hadn't changed from a year ago. And that was a little surprising. But one in four said that their incomes had risen over the past 12 months and rising incomes can signify demand from home buyers. So there you have it. I think that in general, we're showing a remarkably high level of confidence in housing again after the outbreak of COVID-19. And certainly at that point in time, there were some people out there who had fairly serious expectations that the housing market was going to collapse. Now, of course, this could all change very quickly if we continue to see rising infection rates leading to renewed shutdowns in the economy. But my biggest takeaway from the survey is that consumers were very worried, and understandably so, when the pandemic hit. But the plummet in the sentiment level that we saw in March and April, well, it's done a very significant U-turn. And this suggests that their level of concern has dropped significantly. And that is a positive for housing markets across the country. As always, if you've got any thoughts about this subject, or if you have a question you'd like me to talk about in a future video, I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, take care out there, and I hope that you'll join me again next week. Bye now.